Have you ever imagined yourself being turned into a zombie? I know you may not want to associate it with something made from a horror movie, but it's actually a fascinating phenomenon that occurs in nature. Ophiocordyceps unilateralis is a type of fungus that infects ants. Specifically, the Campanotus leonardi takes over its consciousness and turns it into a living zombie. Then, they only have one goal, self-propagation and dispersal. The fungus infects the ant's body and begins to control its behavior. Something truly extraordinary happens, and the ant's behavior becomes altered, causing it to climb up vegetation and attach itself firmly, which are strange and unnatural actions, turning it into a mindless zombie. Ophiocordyceps unilateralis, also referred to as the zombie ant fungus, identified by British naturalist Alfred Russell Wallace in 1859, is today largely found in tropical forest habitats. The frightening fungus affects insects like ants and spiders. This fungus slowly empties its host of nutrients, leaving it weak and helpless, and the insect is thereby forced to seek out a high location and stay there after the fungus seizes control of its body. This phenomenon, aptly named the zombie ant phenomenon, leaves us with countless questions, such as how does the fungal infection manipulate its host, and what processes are in action to influence an insect's behavior? As if having the ants behave in unnatural ways wasn't strange enough, here comes the truly astonishing part in which the fungus continues to grow inside the ant's body until it eventually bursts through its exoskeleton in a macabre display, making way for the release spores to rain down on unsuspecting ants below, starting the cycle anew. It's a startling illustration of how nature can influence and rule even the tiniest organisms. The fungus is known to destroy entire ant colonies. In response, the ants have evolved and developed ways to recognize that a member of the colony has become infected. Healthy ants then carry the dying, infected ant far away from the colony to avoid exposure to fungal spores. The infected ant leaves its nest in foraging areas, seeking a spot on the forest floor with a temperature and humidity suitable for the growth of the fungus. The infected ant will then clamp its lower jaw to the midrib on the underside of a leaf and eventually die. Several days after the ant has died, the fungus sends a fruitling body out through the base of the ant's head, turning its shriveled corpse into a launch pad from which it can jettison its spores and infect new ants. The fungus is one of the best known and possibly most commonly observed creature types with its capacity, according to Brian Denninger, curator of mycology at the Natural History Museum of Utah and biology professor at Utah University. He continued by saying that although there are some possibilities, it's not quite clear how a particular fungus could have the effect it does on insects. He stated that there seems to be some combination of physical manipulation of the muscle fibers, for instance, and possibly growth into the brain itself that can impact its behavior. However, it's also very likely that the host may experience a chemical attack that involves proteins, small molecules, or other chemicals that alter brain function. If you stayed with us up till this point, it means that you like our kind of content that you're getting from us. To see more educational content like this, go ahead and subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. Thank you. Despite the fact that it can seem like something that isn't real at first, the complex mechanisms used by these fungi are what actually cause this occurrence. Through their advanced host brain infiltration mechanisms, they gain control over the unsuspecting victims. Scientifically, a zombie disease doesn't exist. However, zombie stories frequently draw from the scientific understanding of how diseases spread, leaving us with countless questions such as, can fungus diseases affect how people behave? Will viruses change our genetic makeup? Can viruses alter your brain's chemistry? Secretizing fasciitis, what is it and is it contagious? Can dead tissue be revived? These fungi control neurotransmitters, which are the chemical messengers that are essential to the communication system in our brain, 
is one of the most amazing characteristics. Since our body can't function without these chemical messengers, called neurotransmitters, the fungi take advantage of this fact by transporting chemical messages from one neuron or nerve cell to the subsequent target cell. Following target cell may be a gland, muscle, or another nerve cell, and thereby successfully take control of their host behavior, rendering them mindless zombies. Scientists are tirelessly working to unravel the scientific mystery by studying how these fungi achieve such precise control over their hosts, and thus far, the knowledge gained from this research has significant applications for understanding human disorders associated with neurotransmitter imbalances. It's also providing new information on the neurology of fungi. While the infection is 100% lethal, the goal isn't to convert all the ants into the walking dead. For ecosystems to stay balanced, fungi have to keep host populations in check. In fact, only a few ants in a colony are infected at any given time. We're both fascinated with and concerned by the possible spread of the zombie sickness and its effect on both humans and other species as they can cause serious infections and even death if left untreated. However, it's as vital to think about the ecological effects of these fungi infections on wildlife populations. Experts say that the fungus could create zombified insects, but the same happening to humans is not possible in the near future. According to experts, the fungus could turn insects into zombies, but doctors have demonstrated that it's not likely that humans will experience this in the near future, and that's because our bodies are too hot for most fungi to settle on or even thrive in. Based on the scientific community, if the zombie apocalypse affects the human population, you can imagine the disastrous effects on both people and nature. The rapid transmission of the disease among individuals could result in widespread outbreaks, overwhelming healthcare systems, military installations, and causing panic in communities. The physical and psychological toll on affected individuals would be immense, but it's not just humans who would be affected. Wildlife populations could also suffer greatly from fungal infections caused by the spread of the disease. We've seen this with other infectious diseases in animals, such as white-nosed syndrome in bats or chytridiomycosis in amphibians. Hence, fungal pathogens can eliminate an entire population or even drive species to extinction. Ecosystem changes brought on by the zombie plague may have ripple effects on other species because of how interrelated ecosystems are. For example, if a certain animal population declines due to the infection, it could disrupt food chains and lead to imbalances within ecosystems. Hopefully, we can learn something from this fungus and develop defenses against it. We've got to be conscious of the influence parasites have over us and how they do it. Hope that steps can be taken to stop such a scenario from happening. We've got to be on guard and ready for any outbreaks that might occur in the future. Research into understanding fungal pathogens and their transmission dynamics is essential for developing effective prevention strategies. If you found the information in this video educational and fascinating, then I've done a good job. My goal on this channel is to bring you highly educational health information so that you can enjoy learning. If you like this video, then you'll also like other videos on our channel. So go ahead and follow the prompt on your screen right now to watch the next educational health video. And while you're doing that, remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new here and give all of our videos a thumbs up to encourage us to keep making interesting videos like this one. And as always, thank you very much for choosing to spend your time with us today. We'll see you in our next video.